So we're just going to hang out here for a second. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to you know, post them to the uh, question window. I'm more than happy to answer. But you can see here, um, just by controlling that one little simple edge right here in this one, you're getting something which is seemingly much more complex. And you know, when you first see it, um, it might be a little difficult to wrap your head around you know, exactly how that's being um, modeled. Now, because I'm working in Rhino 5, I'm using and taking advantage of some of the functionality here in the uh, display. So if you notice, when I'm in shaded mode, my display updates here to say shaded, and I can turn off my ISO curves on or off. If I'm in rendered view, I can turn my ISO curves on or off. Um, I can also turn the surface edges on or off, make sure there are no shadows being displayed. Um, so I'm always really um, taking advantage of, of that um, uh, so that you know, whenever I'm in the viewport, I can control more precisely, um, you know, how um, things are being displayed. Now, one really helpful um, option is right here, called color backfaces. And with color backfaces on, you can specify a single color. Now, I usually pick something pretty uh, uh, obnoxious, um, you know, that I won't ever use in my model. Um, actually, that's not so bad. <laughs> so maybe I'll uh, I'll switch to something uh, something else. Let's find another color that's pretty bad. I'll use this uh, kind of gross mustard, um, and this will indicate to me in the viewport which side is out. So if you notice down inside of here, if I look underneath, the the inside of my model is actually the the outward facing side um, because these objects have um, directionality just like um, the way a nerve surface would. So if you remember, um, there was uh, the utility pullout. And that utility pullout is where you can actually dig in and modify your T-splines objects. Now, one of the options that you might end up using or needing access to is, is called flip normals. And if I click on flip normals and I pick my T-spline object, you'll notice that now the normals are flipped out and the inside is that mustard color. So that's a really important you know, concept um, to make sure that you're you know, aware of here. I think that there was a question about creasing, um, and since, since we have just a couple minutes here, I thought maybe we could address that. Uh, so I have radial symmetry on, and, and it's important to recognize that this is really my driver here. This is the guy in charge, um, that decisions I make here are what are going to be uh, kind of, you know, compounded and, and driven throughout over here. So a qu the question that came in was that um, in Maya there's an option called uh, contiguous edges as well as the poly crease tool. Um, is there a command um, in T-splines for being able to create a hard crease um, to give you know, kind of hard edges such as what you would see in car design? Um, absolutely. And since we're here, let's go ahead and just take a look really quick. Right here um, we have been walking over slowly, smooth toggle, extrude faces, symmetry, right? If you notice, two over from there is something called crease. So with the crease selected, you can actually come over here and select an edge, hit enter, and it'll create a hard crease for you. Now, in order for that, for that to work, you'll see that it has to, you know, obviously exaggerate the height here to be able to trans, translate the curvature uh, uh, correctly. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. And um, if any of you joined the uh, webinar yesterday with uh, CEO uh, Carl Bass of Autodesk, um, Matt Setterberg of T-Splines and Carl ensured us all that um, crease tool development is very high on their list in terms of the future of, um, of T-Splines. Um, moving forward. So that's very exciting stuff. There was also a mention of the fact that um, T-Splines 4 will begin its beta program in June 
uh, for the Rhino 5 platform. So there's a lot of exciting developments that are on their way. Um, definitely things to be keeping in mind. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, quite happy uh, with that. And the way that we usually do things is uh, I'll just create a post folder and uh, and just drop that that object or that file into the post. So we'll just add a, that file in there. So if anybody had any questions or wanted to see that one more time, um, exactly the way we're looking at it in the video, um, you can do so there. Now, one thing to take a look at here, that crease, as we round this corner, if you look at that, we have this really beautiful vertical line here, right? And that's continuous um, around. The exterior is nice and smooth, and then this interior right here is going to be um, this vertical um, directionality. So it's a very nice um, kind of combination of both uh, organic as well as hard edge geometry there. All right. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are using the evaluation copy, definitely keep an eye on your saves because you only have 25 of them. Now, when you're manipulating uh, your geometry, um, there is an option to use something called soft manipulation. And if you've used Alias or uh, Maya, um, uh, as well as in Max, and there is something called um, painting or soft manipulation, um, which allows you to um, kind of have a gradual fade off of how geometry is influenced um, whenever you're manipulating it. Um, so when you get to something like this, you know, working with the edges um, was pretty sufficient to be able to you know, slowly transition up. But if you want to be able to have more control of how that geometry is modulated, you might want to use something called the soft manipulation tool. Um, now, soft manipulation allows you to begin to articulate through the depth of an object um, at a more gradual um, in a more gradual way. So the easiest way to see that um, is to just create a T-splines primitive plane. And I'll just use eight and eight, and I have quite a few faces here, uh, which is great. So that gives me uh, you know, some options for uh, you know, turning on my, my vertices. I'll have quite a few here to work with. Now, if I wanted to see even more vertices here, I could use the command called tspline subdivide. That'll, that'll actually um, increase uh, the number of subdivisions I have everywhere. In an edit mode, you'll notice that um, we have our vertex snap. And if I move this up, right, it's only influencing right here locally. None of these control points are actually moving. Now, um, under T-splines menu, um, there is an option to be able to turn on the soft manipulation. Uh, I was having trouble finding it before, so let's see where that guy went. All right, I can't. I, actually, I don't really remember where that guy is. So let's let's do this. Now, if you notice, um, in my T-spline edit mode, I have this thing called the uh, the heads up display, and this head up di heads up display gives me an option to. Uh, you know, modify some of the settings that I see here just by clicking, and one of which is soft manipulator, soft manipulation. So one of the first things you're going to want to do with T-splines, actually, once you start modeling, uh, you know, in your day-to-day -day projects, is to actually go over and start to modify some of the options. So from T-Splines menu, you have the ability to get directly to the T-Splines options.
And if you notice um, here, we have T splines, right? Um, the display, hotkeys, conversion, and the user interface. This is the one that we're wanting to look at here is T splines UI. And here you have the ability to turn on the heads up display. And if I hit OK, now when I'm in soft or when I'm in edit mode, I have this heads up display in the top right corner. Now that's great because it gives me a shortcut to some of these options like soft manipulation, for instance. I actually think that soft manipulation option is uh, is located right over here, but we'll just do it this way. And now with that enabled, I can actually select a point. And if you notice here, um, I have a radius around that point, which if I increase that, it will increase the influence of that point on its neighbors. Right, so if I you know, start to move a control point like this, even though I have a lot of control points, right, uh, it, this will um, allow uh, one point to influence its neighbors by using this kind of fall off. And you know, this is something that is kind of uh, you know, basic modeling uh, kind of functionality that you would have in you know, a software suite like Alias or, or Maya, um, but you now have that functionality right here in Rhino. If I disable my soft manipulation and I select my point again, you'll see it's back to local mode, which is um, you know, a pretty fast way to begin to, to, um, to manipulate your geometry. So this component, uh, which we just looked at, um, this is it with, um, we used our radial symmetry about this point. And then we used our axial symmetry about these two axes. So this one corner right here drives each of these, which is then compounded to each of these by way of the um, axial symmetry. So it's really easy to start to compound this, uh, the kind of performance of the, uh, of the uh, component by driving it, um, you know, by one, say, one quadrant uh, and getting creative with how you start to, uh, you know, work with either radial or um, axial uh, symmetry. Um, here you can see the uh, same elements um, thickened as a kind of a, a mat. So instead of extruding the object up, this is um, just, just working as, as a, a thickened element. And so, and again, let's let's take a, a just a minute here and, and uh, address any questions that you may have. Um, so, any, you know, if you have any questions, just go ahead and post them uh, to the uh, question window. Um, the, there was a, a question that related to the question that we had earlier about the poly crease tool. Can you add edge loops in T splines? Uh, great question, and we're going to do that actually. Um, uh, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how that would, would work out here. So if, for instance, I have um, this geometry, the surface here, under modify, you have the ability to um, walk around. You can see we have insert points, insert edges. We can bevel. Uh, we can slide edges around. We can duplicate faces. bridge faces um, and do a number of other things down here. So um, if, for instance, you wanted to insert an edge, you can see that you can select that and say T-spline edge loop to be duplicated or edge ring to be split, right? So I can just, um, you know, select my edge. Let's 
see if I can get that guy to work. We might have to come back to this in another example. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, you can come in here and and, uh, and insert an edge. There we go. Um, just by clicking between two um, two other edges, and you can see it just inserted that entire edge loop around. So um, I hope that that answered your question. Let me take a look at one more time. Um, I'll come over to this guy and uh, using my insert edge, I'm saying insert edge exact and I just click on an edge, click on an edge, hit enter and I just drag to where I would like that to be and it inserts that, that edge loop. Another question was, are you going to be talking about using T-splines with Grasshopper? Um, right now, uh, unfortunately no. <laughs> the uh, T-splines uh, components in Grasshopper um, are not uh, that well developed at this point. Um, there was some initial development, but it, I think it was more of a kind of testing the waters um, to see if there was interest there. There was um, talk about that yesterday in the uh, T-Splines webinar with, uh, again, uh, Matt Sutterberg and um, and uh, Carl Bass, and uh, they, you know, Matt made it very clear that yes, uh, development for Grasshopper will proceed, um, and that is a, a priority uh, for T spline, so uh, as soon as uh, as soon as that starts developing, um, we will definitely be uh, pushing content and uh, being uh, you know really experimenting rigorously with the implementation in Grasshopper. We did use it a number, I guess it was almost a couple of years ago, uh, whenever T splines uh, was made available for Grasshopper, but we haven't really uh, haven't used it since. So. Uh, one thing that we will be following up with uh, with this webinar is actually how to implement uh, T-splines within the workflow of what is taken out of Grasshopper. Um, now that, that kind of extends beyond what we can cover uh, this afternoon, um, but perhaps what we'll do is in the post files, I'll go ahead and throw in a little uh, Grasshopper file for you to, uh, to reference that uh, will produce dynamic uh, line segments for T-spline creation. Um, so I think that uh, that's definitely something that, that everyone, uh, you know, is very excited by and uh, wants to, uh, to understand a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and add in a file um, for your reference. Now, 